in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. One more time, could you put your hands together and give God praise for what we know that he has done? Yes, yes. You may be seated. Amen. Amen. Tonight we are going to have a, a, a few moments of testimony. And uh, I think we have like three or four that are going to testify tonight. And I want to tell you about the power of testimony. The Bible says that we are overcomers by the power of our testimony. And there's no way to have a testimony without having a test. Amen? There's no way to have uh, a word of encouragement, a word of gratitude, unless you have been through something, been through a struggle, been through a trial. Uh, this week, while at uh, Arkansas District Youth Convention, uh, a couple of uh, the young gentlemen were sitting around and I was made privy uh, to a story that a couple of them were telling. And they were speaking of uh, this ecosystem that was built in Japan. In Japan, they wanted to build this great ecosystem where they could uh, sustain life inside of this giant building that they built. Uh, almost like a dome, like a greenhouse type situation. And so they, they built this dome and they uh, planted all the things they needed. They added wildlife. They added, you know, sun. They added rain. They added all of these different things, all of these uh, different attributes. All these scientists came together. They, they put their minds together and they created this, this amazing ecosystem where they could basically control life inside of this building, this, this dome, this greenhouse. After a few years of doing this, after a few years of having this all set up, they began to be concerned because it seemed like that all the trees were growing sideways. And they went in, and they set stuff up and tried to get the trees to grow straight up. But no, no matter what they tried, the, the trees just wanted to lean. And so literally the trees began to just grow just any, any kind of way they wanted to grow, but up. And so after months and months of study and trying to figure out what was going on, they realized that the only thing that they did not add to this ecosystem was wind. The only thing they didn't add to this ecosystem of life was wind and the only way that a, a tree can go straight up is if it has resistance without resistance it grows any, any old kind of way but with constant resistance of wind breeze adversity the tree can go straight so they have since gone back and added in fake wind so that the trees can have some kind of resistance to push against so that they can grow straighter. I was listening to this story this week and I thought, my God, that, that, that is us. Without a test, without adversity, without trouble, none of us can say that we've been through anything. Jesus said, I didn't come for those that are healed. What need do they have of a doctor? I did not come for those who were whole, what need do they have of a savior? But I came for those who had need. I came for those who had adversity. I came for those who had trouble. That's who I'm here for. So tonight, if you have trouble in your life, thank God, because he's still working on you. He's trying to get you to grow straight. He's, he's adding something to your life that is causing you to grow. Resistance and adversity causes us to grow. Amen. And so tonight we're going to have a few testimonies. I'm going to start tonight with our elder brother Weber. Brother Weber, wherever you are. I thought I saw you. There you go right here. I'm used to you sitting right there. Come on up, brother Weber. We're going to have brother Weber start us off tonight. Amen. Would you put your hands together for elder brother Weber. Speak to us tonight, elder.
Oh, praise the Lord, everybody. Uh, some people think I'm a, I'm a jokester, which I am, but there is a real serious side of me. And uh, I have several things that God has blessed me with. And uh, some of you do and do not know that I've been uh, diagnosed five years ago with prostate cancer. Uh, a lot of biopsies, and a lot of them was cancer. And at that time, I decided, uh, what should I do? I thought, should I trust God? And I got a phone call from somebody, and they said, we want you around a little longer, Dad. And I said, well, you know, I'm going to try. I took my a seed implant, took 35 radiation treatments. The last five have damaged my sciatic nerve. Uh, I have been in pain for five years, and I used to, uh, always, we used to go to church, I said, I'm, I'm going to have the ministers pray for me. And finally, and just to, within the last few months or so, uh, it seemed like that voice said to me one day, he said, Brother Weber, you need to do one thing. You concentrate on other people. You pray for other people. When you pray for other people, I will take care of you. And that's been my philosophy, and I've taught my Sunday school class for 24 years plus when I was teaching. And it seemed like I said, if you want joy, and I don't think there's a person here in their life that don't want joy, but the J stands for you got to put Jesus first. You put others second, and you put yourself last. That's when you're going to find joy. Amen. You'll find joy. But, you know, I appreciate all the ones uh, I have been I have been blessed. You, you see me running and dancing. You might, might see me do a lot of other things. But uh, a lot of times I've been, the funniest thing is, I told my wife and daughter uh, the other night when I was moving around in church, it seemed like when I move around, it, it seemed like the Lord just blesses me more and more. The pain sort of lets go because I, I feel I want to be a motivator. And I've probably been that way most of my life. And I'll tell you a little story. When I was uh, living in Florida, I come in contact with a, with a friend of mine. And he, fo he followed me. Uh, he knew I was a church person. His name was Frank Miller. He owned a restaurant there in Bradenton, Florida. And uh, for years and years and years, he always talked to me about church. The last time I went down there about four years ago, he said, Brother Weber, he said, are you still practicing? And I said, uh, yeah, I still play basketball. I do, too. To this day, I still play basketball. I still roller skate. I still ice skate. But he said, are you still practicing? I said, well, I still get to basketball a lot and practice. Everywhere. No. He said, that's not what I'm talking about. He said, I'm talking about are you practicing for the rapture of the church? And this, this man doesn't even know Pentecost like, like he knew I was Pentecost, but he wasn't, he was, a, actually it was a Mennonite, if you know what Mennonite is, Reformed Amish person, if you don't know. But anyways, but he said, I want you to keep practicing. And that, that brought back, that said, people are looking at your lies. When you walk out of this church, it isn't, it isn't what you do all the time in this four walls, is what you do outside of the four walls because there's people watching you every moment, every minute at the grocery store, at the drugstore, at Walmart. You can be a living example. Though I, I, I actually have had my, my lifespan. I went to res restaurants and people have asked me, will you pray for me? They didn't know anything about me. And I've even gone to people and prayed for people. But God has been so good to me, even through it all. And I said, I'm glad I found this church family exactly one year. I've been in this church, one year in, in this church. And I came here by, by accident. I wasn't even planning on being here that night. But, you know, I've been blessed so much with a, a church family. Uh, I lost my sister a year ago with cancer. I don't have any family. You know, I don't have no brother and sister, but I sure got a ton of them in this church right now. Amen. Uh, amen. Amen. I tell you, 
I got one thing to one thing to to, to finalize what what I feel the Lord has led me with is I want everybody that wants the God to move in your life. I want you to stand up right now. Sounds like we're 100 percent. The reason why I asked that, just a few months ago, I was going somewhere in my car, and I never turned the radio on, hardly ever listen to music because anymore because God just speedily talks to me. And I'll, I'll pull outside the road, and I'll write notes down. I, I try to remember what he, I said, but he gave me a thought. And I, every one of you have, have agreed to this. If you want God to move in your life, he said, just move. Just move. So all of you have been committed. If you God wants to move in your life, you got you got to move. You got to move. I'm 77 years old. As of as of uh, Monday was my birthday. As I was 77 years old. I ain't slowed down yet. I don't plan on slowing down to the rapture of the church. But you can all be seated. I'll turn it back to my pastor. But I, I am I am so glad to be in a family of God. Amen? Amen. Sometimes we cry and sometimes we laugh and sometimes we have, have our share of troubles and trials. But thank God for the family of God that loves to be with each other. Thank you very much, Pastor. Amen. 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 I appreciate Brother Weber. I appreciate his worship. Amen. He puts a lot of y'all to shame. Well, I'll just leave it there. I don't want to meddle any, but if you're sitting in church and you're wondering, what should I be doing right now? Just try to find Brother Weber, whatever he's doing. Just do what he's doing. You'll be all right. You'll be all right. He's a great worshiper, 77 years old, still worshiping God with all of his might, all of his heart, and I love what he just told us. If you want God to move, you move. That's always been the principle of God. Draw nigh unto me, and I will draw nigh unto you. Give, and it shall be given. God's always saying, if you move, I'll move. Amen. God is a God of action. He, he responds to action. He doesn't necessarily respond to a lot of talk. Amen. He responds to what we do. And when we move out of our comfort zone and we move, God will hear us, answer us, and he will act on our behalf. Everybody said amen. Amen. This next gentleman I got coming, I know for a fact, he don't really like standing in front of people and talking. But he told me, that just as soon as we uh, said we're having testimony service, he said, Brother Chavis, I want to testify. And I could feel in the spirit he had something, something to say, a great testimony. Brother Gentile, uh, would you please come? We love this family. We are so glad they are at True Chapel. They have been such a blessing to us. Hey, Amen. Put your hands together for Brother Gentile. Speak to Praise the Lord, everyone. Um, as he says, I do not like to speak in front of a lot of people. It just takes a lot for me to be up here. But um, since the beginning of the year, my life has been a testimony this year. Um, it probably started about in the beginning of 2011 when I was electrocuted, and I'm lucky to be standing here today. Um, God has been moving this year mightily, mightily that he has blessed us so much. Um, he has blessed us in a way that, I, I, like I said, I'm here living at this day. I have a, a great family that he has blessed me with. And he brought me to this church, which there is no words that, uh, that I could say uh, how much this church means to me and my family. Um, I love everybody in here so much. And um, a lot of my testimony is going to start, like I said, from when I was there. Uh, he, God could have, I, uh, let me get my thoughts together here. He, uh, I, when I was electrocuted, I did not want to, to do anything. It wasn't my way. 
to um, go after a company um, for you know the situation I was in, but it, you know we prayed about it, my wife and I, and um, if it was going to happen, we said it's going to be in God's time and it'll be His will. Um, this happened over three years ago, and finally at the beginning of this year, He blessed us with uh, a nice blessing to where uh, we were able to start praying on leaving our situation that we we're in and, and coming down here, um, coming back down south, put it like that, because I did not expect to be in Loganville, Georgia today. Um, I have family that's in Florida. I have two kids that are in Florida that I really wanted to get back to, and I never knew where Loganville, Georgia was. <laughs> um, but my wife says, you know, we've got to pray on it, and she says, this time on our move, you are going to make sure you hear from God before we just make any decisions. Um, I wasn't crazy about going back up to New Jersey, but I did. You know, I had a um, family situation up there that I had to, to be there for. And then we were having our own situation. Um, you know, almost uh, our time in Florida, you know, we've been, I'm sorry to get off, but I'm just, it's just bringing another testimony that, um, I could be like our gentleman that we are here with today, uh, eight years ago. Um, so very close to losing everything that we had, but God kept us in a house for 15 months without paying anything just to make sure that we found a way to get back up to New Jersey, that he found a way to get us back up to New Jersey. Otherwise, I could be on the streets myself this day. So I have so much to be thankful when it comes to God. But... <laughs> You know, so we started praying, and, and, you know, my wife started praying, and we, it, Georgia started coming to us. We had no idea about Georgia, and, you know, we, uh, we heard of Pastor Chavis, but we had no idea, you know, really much about him. We, we've heard him in the services, um, but God was drawing us to Georgia, and we came here to visit you all in March, and really, as soon as we walked on this property, we felt the presence of God around this whole area. Um, I told her, and she says, don't get excited already, but she says, I told her, this is where we need to be. And we went back home praying on it, and um, you know, we, we told our family how everything was, and our, our kids really couldn't wait to come down here. Um, and, and that's where we are today here with you all. Um, when we got down here, you know, I did not leave up there for a job. I didn't have a job when I came down here. Uh, he has always seemed to provide for us. I still don't work, and he's providing. Um, he ended up blessing me with unemployment that uh, I never expected to have. And it, it's enough that it... Uh, we make it on it. Uh, I don't ever ask anything from him that, that, that exceeds what we can't live on. Um, I'm, not, I'm not about that. I don't need to have a million dollars. I just have to have God and have my family intact. And, and that's where I am with that. Um, but he's been so blessing us so much this year. I mean, when Pastor talks about our, our prayer that we talk about, I'm getting checks in the mail. I just received a check from over eight years ago from a, for my job that I never knew they had money of mine. And just two weeks ago, the check came in right when we needed it. I mean, it, it's amazing what this prayer is doing for everybody. I mean, I if you believe in God and you give everything that you have to what he, what he is in our lives, and, and really step out, step out like Brother Weber has said, like pastor's been preaching, and, and, and get out of your comfort zone. I mean, I like being in my comfort zone. I don't like traveling outside of my area that I'm used to every day. Um, in these last month or so, I was uh, asked to travel outside my comfort zone for this church and my wife and I, um, you know, with the pastor, 
and his wife coming to us uh, has asked us to, to be part of the, the, the staff, and, and we're going to do it. But it was in an area that I never, ever, ever expected myself to be in. But God spoke to us and says, for me to make you get any farther than you already are, you need to get out of your comfort zone and step into to your unknown. Because that's the only way that you're going to grow and you're going to make it. And um, I love you all so very much. Pastor, you don't know. Um, we've been blessed. Blessed being here with you all so very much. Um, and it's really, I, I have more, but it's about it right now. Amen. Amen. I have a great testimony. Such a great testimony. You know, sometimes it's hard for us to articulate what God has done for us. It's hard for us to, when you start thinking about what all God has done for us, it's, it's very difficult. But that's what testimony service is about. I'm a trained orator. I'm a preacher. I've been preaching, uh, you know, for almost 12 years now in my life. I've preached every week, at least once or twice, every week. For the last 12 years, I'm a trained orator. So when I begin to speak, I'm, I'm trained and I've done it for many times. But when, when people like Brother Gentile get up and talk about his testimony, you hear the raw truth of what he feels. And to me, that's beautiful. Amen. To me, that's beautiful just to hear it from somebody who's just trying to get it across. Y'all don't know how good God's been to me. And I can't, I can't even keep my thoughts together to tell you how good God's been to me. Because it's too good. I can't put it all into words. I can't make it all make sense. When I look over my life and I get to this point, I can't make it make sense. Two plus two is making ten, and I don't know how. And that's how we all feel tonight. We all feel that God has gone above and beyond and done so much for us. Amen. And 2014 was a tough year for us. And, 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 and I got news for you, 2015 is going to be tough too. And 2016, 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021. It, 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 it's life. You're not going to get anywhere by just hoping that this year is going to be the year of the release and God's going to just, you know, make something miraculous happen this year. It takes energy and effort and ability and prayer. It's going to take next year what it took this year and it's going to take 10 years from now what it took this year being in the house of God being focused on what you believe in praying getting involved connecting to God connecting to uh, a ministry saying God use me and change me and direct me and lift me amen I know there's probably a lot of churches tonight that are having prophecy night and they're talking about 2015 is going to be, ain't nothing going to go wrong in 2015. As soon as the clock strikes 12, butterflies are going to show up, and it's going to be angels and unicorn dust, and this is going to be so fantastic. But you and me both know that ain't true. I'm going to wake up in the morning. I'm going to pray God help me today because his mercies are made new every day. God help me be a Christian today. Help me live my life today. Give me peace today. Amen. It's a daily effort, a daily walk. It's, a, it's, it's every day putting one foot in front of the other. Amen. We got one more testimony tonight. Amen. I like Sister Briscoe to get ready. Amen. She's been blessed and she wants to testify. Sister Briscoe, come. Amen. Share with us tonight what God has done for you this year. Amen. Love Sister Briscoe. Glad she is here with us. Amen. She's such a blessing to our church and a blessing to me and my wife personally. God bless you, Sister Briscoe. Speak to us tonight. Praise the Lord. My heart is full of love for my Jesus. I love him. I love my father. He's so good to me. And a lot of times we look back and we, we think at this time we want to look back at the reflection of our year gone by. Excuse me. And I think back of our pastor 
and, and the preaching and the good word of God that he allows to flow through him is not him, but it's God in him and through him. And in my life, this past year, I think about one of the most important things that that's, has been so influential is my prayer. Pastor has spoken many times about the Lord's Prayer. So I challenged myself and I said, okay, okay, Pastor, I'm going to make this my prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. God, you're so holy. You're so righteous. You're so wonderful and kind and gracious to me. And then I proceed, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Jesus, today, my will is your will. My life is your life. Everything that I do, everything that I, everywhere I go, words that I speak is going to be your will done as earth as it is in heaven because I know that everything is perfect up there. I'm not perfect. I'm striving. But I am going to live my, his will in my life. And then, um, um, let me see. I have to start over. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Jesus, bless me abundantly. Pastor says I can do it. God, abundantly. Bless me abundantly. In my food, Lord, in my financial needs, in my car, in my utilities, everything. Bless me, God. Bless my needs, God. And give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses. Oh, God, forgive me of all my sins, my trespasses. God, the things that I've said, the things that I haven't said, that I should have said, the places that I went that I shouldn't have gone. And Jesus, just forgive me. But God, help me to forgive those who've trespassed against me. God, please don't let me lay that to my own charge. Don't let me be deceived in forgiving somebody because I can, I can go to hell for that too, and I don't want to go. Let me continue. You give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sin. Forgive us our debts as we forgive those who trespassed against us. Thank you, sir. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lord, help me not to be led into temptation because temptation is so easy these days and times. There's so many things in our lives that would cause us to be tempted, and I don't want to be tempted. I want my eyes to be set on the higher prize. And Lord, help me. Help me with the spirits that encompass about me for me not to be deceived and to be taken away of my own lust. The Bible says we're drawn away of our own lust and enticed. And there's our problem right there. And, okay, somebody help me. My mind's going everywhere. That is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. It's all his. He is a good God. And, Pastor, that has been such a personal, personal thing in my life. And when I finish that prayer, I feel so complete. I feel complete in him that I can say, Jesus, bless my pastor. Bless him. Bless Sister Amanda. Bless their children. Bless everyone in our church. Heal their bodies. Make them whole. Jesus, do all that you can do to make our lives where we can serve you in a better way. I love the Lord, and I praise him. He's such a good God, and I believe in this prayer. I believe in my God. And also, I want to tell you about a testimony that's happened this week. I guess I'm the mattress lady now. So I'm going up into Atlanta. I leave with a truckload. The Lord spoke to me before I left that morning. He said, fast. I said, yes, sir. I began to fast, and, and so I drove up into Atlanta. I was coming off the ramp on Jimmy Carter on to 85. Right before I did, the Spirit of the Lord came upon me, and I began to cry. I began to weep. I said, oh, God, who needs, who needs this prayer? God, help them, heal them, protect them. It was such an urgency. So a few minutes later, I was so disturbed by it, I called my husband. And nothing was going on, and all of a sudden, bam, one of the mattresses flipped off the back of my truck. And I said, I got to go. So I put my phone down, and I pulled over to the side. I got out and harnessed it down and got it fixed up. I sat down for just a few minutes, and I thought, whew. 
And so I got back in my truck and I headed out and the Lord spoke to me. The Lord said, that's why you were fasting. That's why you were such such an urgency in prayer. I've never interceded for myself that I can really remember. But I want the Lord to do things in my life. I want to be aware of what he's doing. I want to give him praise. I want to give him glory. He's an on-time God. He loves us. He wants to protect us. And we know that all these things that happen, we just think they just, they just don't happen. They happen for a reason. It's to give him glory. So as I began to tell Barry, and I began to tell the man at the mattress company, and this guy, he just has a vocabulary that's just unlimited. And then I started telling him about it. Well, he started telling me about things that happened to him and God. So God don't make mistakes in our lives. If we have a desire and we have a passion to be used of God in prayer, in fasting, in tongues, interpretation, the gifts, the prophecy, all this is going to come to pass, and I'm so excited. I want to be a part. I'm not going to be scared and say, I'm going to fail because I'm going to fall. I am. But I have an advocate. He walks with me and he talks with me. He does all this with me and I love him with all my heart. And it's going to be a challenge to do the things that I desire in my heart. And I'm looking forward to a great year in Christ. Things around me may fall. Everything's not perfect. But I serve a God who knows everything, the beginning from the end. And my my foresight is Christ. I want to make it to heaven. I love him. I love this church. Love, love this church. I love my pastor. I love my first lady. I love him. God has blessed me so much. And pastor, I love you. Amen. Let's give God a big hand clap of praise. Before we go into our time of communion, I know there are so many more testimonies in this room. I know for a fact that there's a lot of testimonies in this room. And I myself have testimony upon testimony upon testimony of what God has done for me in 2014. His power is limitless. And his grace is never ending. And his mercy is kind. And I'm glad I know who he is. There's a lot of people tonight, a lot of people tonight, millions, maybe even billions of people tonight who are focused on uh, party, focused on food and friends, focused on whatever it may be. Uh, I'm so glad that I know that the only reason I'm here for another year is because of Jesus. The only reason I'm here for another year is because he kept his hand of favor and protection on my life. And if it had not been for the Lord, where would I be? If it had not been for the Lord, where would you be? Amen. If it had not been for God stepping in when he stepped in, if it had not been for God making a way out of no way, opening doors that were closed and shut and chained in my path. But he did it. He opened them. He corrected my path. He made the crooked places straight. And I stand before you tonight. Just like you sit before me tonight, healed and whole. And I know that God is able to do it. Amen. (laughs) 2015 is going to be an exciting year. It's going to be exciting. Here around Truth Chapel, we got a ton of stuff that's coming into place. You got to be here on Sunday. You got to be here on Sunday. uh, 2015, casting vision. It's going to be exciting. We got a lot of new things coming around. We're putting a lot of stuff in place. There's a lot of structure coming to Truth Chapel. And uh, I, I love the church just how it is right now. But ladies and gentlemen, it's about to explode. This church is about to explode. This church already exploded. I don't know where we're going to put it, but it's going to explode. Amen? And, and if we have to go to two services or three services, we're going to find a way to fit these people in this room. We're going to find a way to do it. Because God is going to do something mighty and amazing. And it's not totally because of us. It will be effort and energy on our part, time and commitment, definitely. But I need you to know something tonight, that God is about to do something great at Truth Chapel and all across the nation and all across the world because he is coming back. 
He is coming back. Time is drawing short. I feel like we're in the midnight hour. I said, I feel like we're in the midnight hour. Time is drawing short. And the Bible said that before God will come back, there will be a great revival. And there will also be a great falling away. We will see many people fall from the truth. We will see a great falling away. But the doors of the church will be burst open by people that are seeking God, seeking something that is real, seeking something that is true. Show me something that can change me. Show me something that can bring me out of this fear. Show me something that can bring me out of this addiction. Show me something that can bring me out of this pain. Show me a true God. I don't want your social club. I don't want just your friendship. Or, or I, I don't just want to come to your church so I can have some kind of status. But show me something that can change me. And, and we have it. His name is Jesus. We just show him Jesus. Look, look, look to him, the author and the finisher of our faith. Look, look to him. He, he is the one that can bring you out of everything you're in. He's the one that can pick you up and turn you around, place your feet on solid ground. He's the one that can take you out of debauchery and demise and wash the sins off of you and clean you up. Hallelujah. I don't want to give this world Jesus our flavor. I want to give them pure Jesus, pure word. This is the word of God. This is the word of God. This is not my opinion. This is not just how I feel about it. But this is what God said. Amen. And so uh, tonight as we step into a new year, as we, as we move into something new, it is a time of reflection, a time of inventory. I want to read for you tonight as we step into a time of Communion, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, and uh, I'm going to read the beginning, the second part of verse 23. It says that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, Ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. Tonight we're going to do communion. Now, at this point, we only do communion once a year at True Chapel, and that is on New Year's, uh, New Year's Eve, the bringing in of the new year. Now, there are places that do communion more often. Some do it every week, uh, every Sunday to do communion. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I, I, don't, I don't have any angst against that. That's to each his own. However, I do see communion as a very spiritual event. And I also see it as a very serious event. I believe that communion should be taken with uh, a seriousness of heart. And a, and a conscious of mind that I'm doing this in remembrance of the Lord's death and his return. And so I don't want to take this with an unworthy heart and an unworthy mind and an unworthy spirit. But I want my life to be clean before the Lord. I want my heart and my mind and my spirit to be clean before the Lord. 
Because when I do this, I remember, I remember the, the cross. I remember Calvary. I remember his death, his burial, and his resurrection. But I also remember that he is coming back for a church triumphant who is white as snow without spot or wrinkle. Amen. And so uh, I will ask tonight that if you uh, do not feel like you need to take communion tonight, nobody's going to look at you cross-eyed. Nobody's going to think anything less of you. If you feel like, hey, you know what, I'm not right and I, and I ain't getting right, then don't take it. Because the Bible said he that does it unworthily does it to his own damnation. I take the Bible very seriously. It, it behooves you to take the Bible very seriously and very literally. It behooves you to do that. Because if we believe it's true, then we should read it for what it is and also apply it to our life for what it is. God uh, is a God of procedure. And whether we want to believe it or not, God is also a God of tradition. And God is also a God of process. And there are certain things that we do physically that represent something spiritually. Baptism is a spiritual event. Uh, but it is also a physical event. You are immersed in water in the name of Jesus. And it is a very physical activity. The only thing that really happened to you in the physical realm is that you got wet. Amen? That's it. But in the spiritual realm, God symbolically has washed away all of your sins. If you repented, then the baptism is for the remission of the sins you repented of, that they are remitted from your life, no longer to be held to your account. Pretty amazing what can happen through a physical action, what happens symbolically in the spirit realm. The Bible tells us that there are certain things in the spirit that we cannot see, that the human eye, the human heart, the human mind cannot see. It is a spiritual element. Communion is one of these events. Tonight, if you take communion, all that will happen physically is that you will eat a piece of nasty bread and drink a little sip of juice that ain't enough to get that little piece of bread down. That's all that's going to happen. But in the spiritual realm, what you are doing is you are saying, God, again, I apply the cross to my life. I take your body and I eat it. I take your blood and I drink it. And once again, that cross, that, that, that moment of desolation, that moment of crucifixion for you becomes a moment of victory for me. That's what happens in the spirit realm. When you say, Lord, I take your body and I eat it. I take your blood and I drink it and I remember the cross. And I don't do this haphazardly. I don't do this just all willy-nilly. But I do this with seriousness of heart and clarity of mind. God, clean me, purge me, wash me that I may be clean and white. Purge me with hyssop that I may be white as snow. This is a moment, God, that I'm saying I remember the cross and I'm stepping in to 2015 as a pure soul. I'm stepping into this new year. I'm stepping into this new level. I'm stepping into this new ministry. I'm stepping into this new anointing, clean. Yep, the body has been applied. The blood has been applied. The body that was broken for me, the blood that was shed for me, has now taken hold of my life, and I am now washed white as snow. As often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. So tonight, as the music begins to play very softly, all over this room, I would ask you to join me in a time of repentance. If you plan on taking communion tonight, I, want, I need you to join me tonight in repentance. And I don't need you to let me pray for you. I need you to pray for yourself. I need you to ask God, God, clean my spirit. Wash me. God, I'm sorry. If there's anything that stands between me and you, I'm sorry. If I've failed you in any way, if I've let you down in any way, I'm sorry. This is a moment of honesty with God. 
This is a moment of clarity with God. God, forgive me for all of my sins. Wash me. I want to eat your body. I want to drink your blood. I want to remember you tonight. I want to put Calvary right back in front of me again. I want to see that cross one more time. Take me back to Calvary's heel. Let me remember the broken body, the lashes that came across your back so that I might be healed. The crown of thorns that was placed upon your head so your deity could reign supreme in my life. The slaps on your face so you would understand me when people misuse me and abuse me. The nails that held you to the cross that represented me. Those nails represented me. They held you there. They kept you there. That's what this is about tonight. So as every head is bowed, every eye is closed. Pray with me now. God, we come before you tonight. We are standing at the edge of a new year. We are standing, God, every one of us, every one of us have sinned and come short of your glory. There's nobody in this room tonight that is exempt from that. Not one of us can stand here tonight and say, I don't need to tell God I'm sorry. But God, all of us tonight, on the same level, no big eyes or no little U's, we are all come before you tonight humbly with our heads bowed, our spirits open. I'm sorry. Clean my heart. Clean my spirit. Wash me that I may be white as snow. God, my sin is ever before me. But I know that you can clean me tonight. God, I don't want to take this communion unworthily. God, your cross is too serious for that. I don't want to take this communion unworthily, Lord. Your sacrifice that you made for me is way too serious for me to come in here and just take it so I can mark off a check on my box. But God, this means something very serious to me. This is something very sacred to me. This is your body. This is your blood. I don't want to take it unworthily tonight, God, so clean me. Wash me. Purify and prepare my heart tonight. Establish my goings. Wash me that I may be white as snow. Would you just speak to God for just a few more moments? Speak to him in your own way now. Would you just talk to God for just a little bit? Jesus, clean us, God. Wash us. Wash us, Lord. Wash us. Wash us. body and the blood, the body and the blood, the body and the blood, the body and the blood. God, I don't want to do this unworthily. Clean my heart, my mind, my spirit. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Now, if you are going to take communion, and only if you are going to take communion, if you are under the age of 12, listen to me very closely. If you are under the age of 12, and you have received the gift of the Holy Ghost and been baptized in Jesus' name, you can take communion tonight. However, if you are under the age of 12 and you have not done that yet, I don't want to make you feel bad or sorry. I just take this very seriously. Please do not take communion tonight. And it's, I just, I, I, I find this moment very serious. And so I don't want to make anybody feel bad or anything. And so if you plan to take communion tonight, would you please stand at this time? If you plan to take communion, please stand. And if you don't plan to take communion, that's fine. Nobody's going to hold it against you. Nobody's looking at you. You are good. If I could just kind of split it right down the middle here. And if this side will come out here. And see Brother John and begin to grab some. Uh, if you'll start from the back and come up front, start from the back and start coming. Split right down the middle heel. Also, on my left hand side the same way from the back. If you'll begin to come. 
begin to come from the back. I'm pretty sure we have enough. On my right side, come. Brother Gentile, Brother Claville, won't y'all start moving people this way? Please just take it and go back to your seat. Just hold on to it. Take a moment, but it is fine. And I'll cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. And I'll cherish the old rugged cross. My trophies at last I lay down. Now cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a sing it with me one more time and I'll cherish the old rugged cross where my trophies at last I lay down and I'll cling to the old exchange it some day for a crown. Amen. If you would take the first layer off and take out your piece of bread. The bread represents the body, the beaten, bruised, broken, battered body of Christ, the slapped face, the crown of thorns, the beaten back, the mutilated body of Christ. His body was destroyed for our healing, for our peace. He was broken for our transgressions. Take, eat the body of Christ. Now if you would open your juice. The blood that Jesus shed for me. God's blood. 
that I was so unworthy of. But he shed it so that I could be pure from sin. That the chains and bondage of Egypt would no longer hold me. That that blood, that Passover lamb applied to my life released me from the holds and released me from the bonds of sin and shame. Drink the blood of Jesus Christ. Now all over this building, would you lift your hands and would you lift your voice and would you begin to worship him? God, I thank you for the cross. Your body bruised and battered for me. Your blood, sacred blood, holy blood shed for me. I am unworthy. I am undeserving of this, God, but I do this tonight in remembrance of the cross, in remembrance of your death, but I also do it in the remembrance of your resurrection power. In the name of Jesus, by the power of the cross, by the power of your blood, by the power of your word, and by the power of your resurrection, I pray that every heart would be healed tonight. I pray that every spirit would be renewed tonight. I pray that we would all go back to that cross and wrap our arms and our hands around that cross again. Oh, God, thank you for the cross. To the highest mountain. Yeah. Would you worship him for the cross tonight? Would you magnify him? You shed your blood for me. You shed your blood for me. I wasn't worthy. I was undone. I was no good. But you shed your blood for me. Just take a moment and rejoice right here. Would you just rejoice in the Lord? God, we're going into 2015. Heal, restore, renew, whole, clean, washed. Hallelujah! I've been set free by the blood of the Lamb and the power of the cross. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Shouting to God with the voice of triumph. Oh, hallelujah. My, 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 my. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We are so unworthy of your blood, of your flesh. God, but you gave it to us anyway. Hallelujah. I'm so glad, I'm so grateful for everybody that came out tonight. Thank you for being here in this special communion service, this special New Year's service, testimony service. Going into 2015, I pray favor over every one of you. I pray blessing over every one of you. I pray that God would open doors for you. 
I pray that every crooked place in your life would be made straight. I pray for some of you, the fog of doubt would lift off of your life. I pray that you would have clarity. I pray that God would not only give you knowledge, but he would give you wisdom to use that knowledge. I pray favor over your family. I pray that you, you and your brothers and sisters would reunite. I pray that you and your mother and your father would reunite. I pray that every broken family would be put back together. I pray for your finances. I pray that God would bless you abundantly. I, I pray that God will bless you immeasurably. I pray that everything you touch turns to gold. But I promise you that it will take effort. I promise you that it will not come in a bottle. I promise you there's not a 1-800 number you can call and make it happen. I promise you it's going to take prayer. I promise you it's going to take fasting. I promise you it's going to take energy and effort and commitment on your part. But I pray that you have it. All of it. I pray that God give you and grant you every wish and every desire that you have in your life. I pray it over you tonight. Amen. Don't forget, as soon as we dismiss tonight, to my right, to your left, the Jonathan's and Tiffany need to see all the parents and all the students that are going to AYC. Would you tonight stretch your hands towards me? God, this is my last prayer of blessing over this church in 2014. And I pray that you would cause your face to shine in their life. I pray you would give them favor with God and man. I pray that you would protect them and prosper them. I pray you would touch every aspect of their life. I pray, God, you would open doors that can not only be opened, but by you. And I pray they would take root and bear fruit for your kingdom. And I pray it in the name that is above every name, by the power of the name of Jesus Christ, by the power of your blood, by the power of your word, and by the power of the resurrection. I speak it in Jesus' name. Let it be so, and let it be done. And would everybody in this house shout in Jesus' name. And one more time, would you just give God a hand clap of praise and rejoice.